Hello and a huge welcome to today's session from the Summer Festival, which today is focusing on studying in Scotland. Um, now, before I hand you over to representatives from the University of Aberdeen, just a few house rules. Today is an extremely popular session across the Zoom platform and on social medias as well. So if you have any questions, if you've got any concerns, any issues relating to any applications you might already have or any questions you might have before applying. If you're on Zoom, please use the chat or the Q&A facility. There will be a live Q&A at the end. Alternatively, on social media, please put it in the uh, messenger facility and we will endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, a reminder that it's a live session. If you're watching on demand, then you need to send your questions through to gareth at postgradsolutions.com. Now, just before I hand you over, just a brief uh, insight as to what's coming. So a presentation from today's partners, the Uni of Aberdeen, a bit more about postgrad after the Q&A, an opportunity for you to win £500 um, off your tuition costs, which doesn't affect any kind of funding that you might have already applied for and what is coming up. But for now, I'd like to hand over to David, Emma and Emily, or representatives at the University of Aberdeen. A huge hello and thank you for being part of today's session. Um, I'd like to hand over the screen to you guys now to have this opportunity to present and I'll be back at the end. See you soon. Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see so many of you on this call to learn more about studying in Scotland. And we from the University of Aberdeen are in a very good position to tell you about studying in Scotland, as we have been doing it now for over 525 years. So I am going to hand over to two of my colleagues. I'm Emma and I head up the admissions team at the university, but I'm going to hand over to two of my colleagues who are international regional managers at the University of Aberdeen. And I'm going to hand over to David to tell you some more about us and Scottish education. Thank you very much, Emma, and a very warm welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are joining us from and when you are listening to this maybe afterwards. Uh, over the next wee while, we'll give you bit of an overview of our studying in Scotland and at the University of Aberdeen. And then, as Gareth mentioned, there will be a Q&A at the end where we will try to answer as many of your questions as possible. So, of course, the first question is, why Scotland? Uh, why, why would you want to consider studying here? Um, there's just some of the few reasons here, uh, aside from the beautiful countryside, the, the, the people, you know, the, the sort of, you know, castles and whiskey and everything else that's on offer. From an education point of view, Scotland is renowned for its education system, has some amazing universities, and as you can see here, some of, sort of you know, really world changing research and inventions have come out of Scotland. So we've been doing education for a very long time. As Emma mentioned, we've been around for about 500 plus years, uh, being one of the so-called ancients. Um, you can see some of the sort of inventions that Scotland has given to the world there, the MRI scanner, uh, which was the, the first full body one was developed at Aberdeen, for instance, cloning, but also very common things like you know, the telephone, television, flushing toilets very useful um, and then more recently things like the Higgs boson which has sort of revolutionized uh, our understanding of the universe. Scotland is also a place that's warm and welcoming. I myself came here as an international student many many years ago now uh, and found it so warm and welcoming that I'm still here and I have the great pleasure of working for the University of Aberdeen where I studied myself as an international student. So Scotland as a home welcomes about 50,000 55,000 international students every year from you know, 180 countries, so almost every country is represented here. The Scottish master's degree, similar to the, the British master's degree overall, is a 12-month program, so normally a full year, quite intense, but you are finished after one year of studying, so normally from September to August or from January to December, uh, a lot of uh, places offer January starts. So you have a bit of flexibility as to when you start your studies and you have the, the whole gamut of options of, you know, if you want to be a sort of a campus based university, a city center based university, big, small, rural, urban, uh, there's a lot of choice on offer. One of those choices and one of those things on offer is the University of Aberdeen, which we'll go into more detail about now. So Emily, if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. Just give you a brief overview. Uh, we are the fifth oldest university in the English speaking world. Um, so we've been around for over 500 years. We are our main campus is based in Aberdeen on the beautiful northeast coast of Scotland. And Emily will say a few more things about our location later on. We do offer degrees at all levels, so bachelor, master's and PhD. I think most people here today will be interested in, in the master's level of study. And we offer degrees across most disciplines. Uh, so whether you're interested in, in, in law, uh, medical physics, various engineering programs and uh, philosophy we do have degrees in those fields the ones that we are most well known for uh, i think it's sort of things like energy uh, formerly sort of more oil and gas but now we also very much 
into transition, uh, renewable energy, sustainability, medical sciences. As I said, the MRI scanner was or the first full body MRI scanner was built and, and developed in Aberdeen. So medical physics, medical imaging, um, we offer some interesting programs in. Our law school has been around just like our medicine school for centuries. So they have some really good programs. So whatever you're interested in studying, there will be a master's degree uh, that is of interest to you. And as and we sort of go through the changes from, for instance, in the energy sector, from oil and gas to more about renewable and, and sort of green energy, our programs adapt. So you always have cutting edge uh, research and teaching at your disposal. We are a medium-sized institution. So we have about 15,000 students uh, from 130 different countries. So very cosmopolitan campus. And at master's level, almost half, so about 47, 48% of our students are from outside of the UK. Um, so you get a real mix of a very sort of cosmopolitan learning environment there. All of uh, what we're about to sort of tell you is just an overview because we only have a limited number of time, but you can find full details on our website there. Next slide, please, Emily. Um, some of the questions, no doubt, will be around tuition fees and funding and entry requirements. And, and to save us all a lot of time, the main answer to all of these is it varies from degree to degree and partially depends on your fee status. Um, but as I said, you can find all of that information on our website. Uh, our master's fees range between sort of uh, 9,000 to about 25,000 pounds, depending on your fee status. There are sources of scholarship and funding available. They depend on your program, where you are from. So we do normally recommend if you have a look at our funding database, we list all of the sources we are, we are aware of. A lot of the scholarships are partial scholarships. Uh, there are some full scholarships like the Shevening Scholarship, for instance, they tend to be very competitive and have early deadlines. So the sooner you look at funding sources, uh, the, the easier and the better, and you, you don't risk missing deadlines. Then if you're uh, not from as far afield, but if you are from within the UK, then SAS and the Scottish government, uh, and for those, those in the other parts of the UK, so they are the equivalent of SAS, like Student Finance England, will have some funding available for postgraduate study. Our entry requirements, similarly, they vary from degree to degree. Generally, most of our degrees either ask for 2-2 or 2-1 or the equivalent thereof uh, from if you're from overseas. We have lots of experience at dealing with overseas applicants, so you don't need to translate your qualification into a 2-2 or 2-1. We have information about that on our website, and our selectors uh, have a lot of experience at reading your transcript, so you can just send us a copy of your transcript without needing to translate it. Um, and the other thing I would say is we don't also offer pre-masters. So for those of you who do not quite meet our entry requirements, there are options available um, if you need to sort of bridge the gap between your qualification and our master's programs. Here, just as all universities, we like to sort of brag a little bit, show off uh, about what we do well. Um, so we are within the UK, we're generally ranked in the top 20, uh, globally in the top 160, as you can see there. One that I'm particularly proud of is that we're quite highly ranked for student satisfaction. So we do make sure that all of our students have a good experience uh, when they are with us. And you can see some of our other accolades there. So we were Scottish University of the Year a few years ago. We got the Queen's Anniversary Prize for part of our medical research, um, such as the MRI scanner, for instance. And uh, Emily, next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned, we're very happy. You know, what we, what we do is for our students and we, we want to make sure our students have a good experience here. So here are just some of the, probably the rankings we are proudest of in terms of making sure um, that you know everyone who comes to us has the experience that they have in mind. So you can see fifth overall in the NSS, uh, 12th student experience in times, and Sunday Times Good University Guide and seventh in the Guardian. So I think that's something we're very happy about. Next slide, please. Uh, our location. Depending on where you're from, you might not be as familiar with it, but we sort of, as I said, on the beautiful northeast coast of Scotland. Uh, and while we sometimes get told that we are very far away from places like London, we have our own international airport in town, which is about a 15 minute drive from campus and does have regular connections to, to London, Amsterdam, Dublin, Manchester. So we're incredibly well connected, uh, partially because we have the oil and gas industry uh, in town and a lot of other uh, industries here and there's two universities and a big college so it's a very cosmopolitan place and, and quite easy to get to normally. 
Next slide, please. I mentioned our location. So our main location is in Aberdeen, or two of our main locations are in Aberdeen. Uh, our main one is the King's College campus, which is our nice historic, looks a little, a little bit like Harry Potter. And then we also have our Forster Hill Health campus, where those who are interested in medical sciences would be based, and which is one of the largest medical campuses in Europe, right next door to a, a working hospital. So that's all of the facilities you would re require. We do have some um, locations further afield. We have a campus in Qatar in a partnership with AFG College, which also offers some of our postgraduate programs. And we have, we have various research stations, such as the Cromarty Lighthouse, if you're coming from biological sciences. And then we house a number of centers, such as the National Decommissioning Center. Next slide, please. So that's our King's College campus uh, in sort of the historic heart of Old Aberdeen. Absolutely beautiful. There are some newer buildings around. Not all of the buildings are from our founding days, but it's, it's an incredible learning environment, especially on, on a nice day. Uh, lots of people like to sit on, on, on King's Lawn, which you can see there. It's also very easy to get to. The, our sports facilities are close by. The beach is a 15, 20 minute walk away. The city center is sort of a 20, 25 minute walk away. So overall, it, it, it's a very manageable location and, and you have your learning environment but you're very close to where you want to live or where you want to go shopping or to the cinema or for your entertainment. But once again, Emily will say a few more things about those later on. The next to our King's College campus, we have our Forrester Hill campus, which is part of one of the largest health campuses and sort of life sciences research facilities uh, in Europe. It's right next to a working hospital and has some state-of-the-art facilities, um, some of which includes of 3D projections of the human spine down down the lecture room. So um, for those interested in medical sciences, you really have cutting edge teaching technology available there. It's a little bit further afield from our main campus, but it's walking wise, it's still just about a 25 minute walk. And there are regular bus services connecting our campuses. Uh, but of course, uh, next slide, please, Emily. Uh, we're not just so very obviously, as I, as I mentioned a few times, we're very old, we're very proud of our heritage, but we are also looking at our future. And so we have a massive investment program in our facilities to make sure we stay as up to date as possible and make sure students have access to the right teaching technologies and learning environments. So we have just opened our new, science, our new science teaching hub, uh, which is on campus, uh, which is uh, up and running already. And then in the near future, our business school is getting a brand new uh, home also on campus and we're transforming some of our spaces to have more teaching learning spaces but also more so socializing spaces where students from all over can meet uh, hang out and, and sort of just you know, share ideas and, and learning and at this stage i will hand you over to emily to talk to you a little bit more about the the, uh, the location and some of the other services we provide at the university so emily over to you Perfect. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having us today. My name is Emily. I'm the regional manager for Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia here at the University of Aberdeen. So I'm going to kick off today by telling you about our home in Aberdeen. I am not actually from Aberdeen. I'm from the south of Scotland and I have lived in other cities in Scotland, but Aberdeen is my favourite. I've been here for almost 10 years and I absolutely love it. And one of the reasons I love it is because we have a beautiful coastline. So as David said, we are on the northeast coast of Scotland. We um, are very privileged to be right next to the seaside and the university is located seriously close to that. So at lunchtime, you can always go a walk along the beach. Um, and at the weekends on the other side of Aberdeen is our beautiful greenery and hillside. So our location is absolutely excellent. And we have been named in one of the top most iconic landscapes in the world by a natural geographic, which is pretty cool. Aberdeen was also ranked 20th in the New York Times list of must-see global destinations in 2019. So the city in general is very cosmopolitan, it's exciting, it's a very fluid city because we are the energy, oil and gas capital of Europe. We have lots of business professionals and families either coming in to study or to work and these people are always transitioning through the city to other places. So it has a real buzz um, about the place. We also have one of the lowest crime rates in Scotland, which is great um, for international students intending to move their lives overseas because it is a very big deal. You're considering uprooting everything and coming to our wonderful city. So you want to know that you're going to be safe. Um, and I certainly feel safe, especially walking around um, by myself. I have no problems with that. 
There are apparently more castles per acre in Aberdeenshire than anywhere else in the British Isles, which is pretty impressive. We are known as castle country. So at the weekend, um, if you want to go exploring and enjoy some of our Scottish heritage, there's castles galore um, and they're very easy to access. We have great public transport routes with bus and train functions. Um, and you can also rent cars and bikes if you wish. There is a bit of a myth surrounding the Aberdeen climate and weather. So lots of students often ask me, is it freezing? Am I going to be super cold? Is it always rainy and windy? The answer is no. We do experience all four seasons in Aberdeen. Sometimes we can experience four seasons in one day, which is pretty interesting. But most of the time, um, especially in summertime, it's beautiful. Spring, we're a very green city. So lots of our trees blossoming um, and it's very pretty. But Aberdeen is actually one degree warmer than the Scottish average. And would you believe it that we enjoy half the annual rainfall of Miami? I've never heard anyone complain about Miami before. So the fact that uh, we actually enjoy half of their rainfall is saying something. Oh. There we go. Um, Aberdeen in general offers students a great quality of life. You'll see from this little infographic just how close we are to the beach and then the greenery on the other side. We have a variety of different beaches on our doorstep. Um, as you go further up the coast, they are a little bit more secluded um, and beautiful. If you're interested in seeing wildlife and seals, um, that's super fun. Um, we also have our mountains on our doorstep. So if you want to climb some Munro's um, or go hill walking at the weekends, you can do that. We have a botanic garden on campus, which in the summertime is lovely. Students tend to sit there in the gardens and read. And um, we also harvested our own botanicals from this and produced our own gin. Um, and lots of our alumni took this home to their families. So that's cool. We have lots of fresh air and very little pollution. That's another reason that I love the city. Your lungs always feel super fresh. Um, and if you're coming from a very busy, polluted city, then Aberdeen really is a breath of fresh air. And David did mention that we have an international airport. Again, this is one of my favorite things because I travel a lot with work. It's located super close to the city center. Um, it's very modern and new. And for students who are flying in from different countries, if you fly from, say, Amsterdam into Aberdeen, you will do the immigration process in Aberdeen. And sometimes this is a little bit less stressful than doing it in, a, in an airport like Heathrow in London. So that's also something to consider. I'm now going to show you a quick video um, of Aberdeen and of campus. So hopefully Gareth can share this with you.
Over to you guys again. Thank you, Gareth. Um, hopefully the next slide. Here we go. <laughs> Technical difficulties, two seconds. So thank you for sitting through that video. Hopefully it really showed you um, the beauty of our city and all of the different aspects that our city has to offer as well. So things from sporting activities right through to um, our art that we have on show in the city and our coastline. Um, and I love photos because I think you're all in different cities throughout the world. So it's a great opportunity to show you what our campus looks like. So here's some pictures of our beautiful library of our sports facilities and of our campus on a beautiful day. And we also have another video now, so I'm going to pass back to Gareth to share this with you. And it gives a real insight into student life, hopefully. So here we go. Living in Aberdeen, like people always say it can be quite grey, but most of the time Aberdeen is really sunny, which like I didn't expect at all. Because when you think of the UK and Scotland, you think of like, you know, rain and clouds and everything. I like Aberdeen's weather. It's always sunny. I think it's tall, it's small, but it's safe. And it's very good for uh, living there and studying there. When I first came here, I used to make a lot of jokes about how when you walk around campus, it kind of looks like this cliche university where like there's people sitting on the grass playing the guitar, but like it's actually like that. So it's, it's really laid back and relaxed when the weather is nice. On a sunny day, the city flocks towards the beach. The first hot day of the year is usually popping. Like, like um, you, see, you see all of Aberdeen come out. We're fortunate where we are at the university campus. We have a beachfront around a 10 minute walk away. You can walk into the centre of town in 15 minutes, an international airport, everything you'd expect from an international city. I love this place. I, 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 have, I have dreamed of living in a place like this before and I can't believe this is happening. I really, honestly, I, I love the city. I'm actually living my dream. Back over to you, Emily. Okay, let's hope it works this time. <laughs> okay, perfect. So um, hopefully that gave you a real insight into different student perspectives on their take on Aberdeen and, and how they find it um, being in the city. So we also offer lots of things to do with student life because we want you to have a really well-rounded experience when you come to our university. So not only will you be focusing on your studies, we also want you to take part in lots of other activities. I'll talk first about accommodation. So Today's um, webinar is main, mainly based for postgraduate students. We do have some postgraduate accommodation that I would recommend um, for students and we're happy to take questions at the end. However, you can also email our accommodation department if you wish to stay in private accommodation. We can give some advice about that as well. We have an amazing international centre, which brings all of our international students together. They host things throughout the year. Um, so for example, um, they'll do food tasting sessions from different countries so that you can go and get an understanding of some of your friends' backgrounds and the types of food they like to eat at home. Um, and it's also a great way for you to make friends. We have study abroad options. We have student support and counselling, which is a really important facility and everyone should utilise this. So obviously your education system um, in whatever country you're based in might be slightly different to that of the UK. And when you come and you have to write essays and do group work and projects, the structuring of those essays might be a little bit different to what you're used to. And that's absolutely fine. That's what this student support service um, is there for. They will guide you and give you advice on how to structure um, and write a proper essay or, or how to do things in your coursework that perhaps um, you're struggling with. We have a counselling service, again, which is there for everyone to use, um, and it's based on campus, and they also have virtual facilities too, so please also feel free to use those. AUSA is our student union, 
Um, it's based on campus and they have cafes, they have um, facilities within um, the student hub to do um, performances. They have lots of different um, places to eat. So if you're worried about cooking and you're not very good at that, there's always a hot meal on campus um, available for you. You can also buy a card and load it with money so that you can constantly use that on campus if, again, you're a little bit worried about cooking for yourself. We have hundreds of sports teams, clubs and societies. These range from um, underwater hockey to the Harry Potter Society, chess society, you name it, there is something for everyone. But if you do look at the list and you think, wow, I'm really interested in, um, say, underwater basket weaving or something, and you see it's not there, you can always make one yourself. We're always open to extending that list. So we hope that you find something enjoyable um, to take part in and make friends on campus within our lists. The career service is also super important and I would utilize this as a master's student from day one. They will help you structure your CV, they can give you um, interview techniques, they also have a jobs board that you can look at and, and that this is for professional jobs after you study but they also sometimes offer uh, part-time jobs whilst on campus. Students um, at postgrad level will be more intensive learning and then those of students who are at undergrad level. And if you're coming here on a tier four visa, you are allowed to work up to 20 hours per week. However, I think that that's quite a lot considering that you'll have uh, lots of reading um, and lots of coursework to do. So if you do take a part-time job, I'd be looking at less hours um, and maybe applying for uh, student ambassador positions that we offer on campus because the hours are very flexible and you can pick them up ad hoc so that you can work around um, your class time and um, all of your coursework. But as I said, the career service is excellent and they obviously have helped our alumni go lots of different places. The university has produced over 140,000 graduates since 1495, which is pretty cool. And between 1495 and 1970, 41,739 people graduated. So that just shows from 1970 till now, um, how much we have improved and the impact that we have had on students because our numbers have increased significantly. We have over 120,000 graduates currently living in over 202 countries in the world. So we're everywhere. Um, and I know when I travel, I love to meet um, with alumni and chat to them. So hopefully if you come and study with us, you can become part of this community. We have chapters throughout the world and they, for example, in Nigeria, Indonesia, Ghana, India, America, they all have groups of people that meet every now and again um, and celebrate their time at the university. These images here show where some of our um, alumni have gone on to work. We have people working in Disney, we have energy experts, we have medical experts, robotics gurus. Um, we ha also have over five Nobel Prize winners who are from the university. So that's some pretty great statistics. And that's a real brief roundup of our university. Um, we're more than happy now to answer questions in a Q&A session. If you ever want to get in touch with us, you can always email study at abdn.ac.uk. David and I um, will also share our email address in the chat box for anybody who would like to get in touch uh, directly with us. And please check out our social media pages. So at Uni of Aberdeen on Instagram and Facebook, and you can use the QR code to link directly to that. So now um, over to you guys. Thank you for that, Emily. Very, very insightful. Uh, Emma, Emily and David, that was brilliant. Thank you. Um, for those of you that are now watching and for a, a huge welcome to our podcast listeners that will join us once this session has been recorded and fine tuned as well. Um, a few questions have come flying in as you can see it's been an extremely popular session what i'm going to try and do for you three is just try to broaden the questions as much as possible because it's impossible to go into too much detail and to the people that have put in the chat facility um their id numbers and stuff like that we just respectfully ask that you don't it's personal information um we will reach out to you afterwards or the university of aberdeen will anyway um, so there's no need to do that. We won't be able to answer any questions on here anyway related to that. Um, so I'm going to start with um, 
uh, Emily, if you don't mind. I know you've done a lot of talking in the last 10 minutes, Emily. No worries. So um, but I wanted to touch upon uh, what you said about Aberdeen and um, having an international airport, um, you know, how important it is for international students to have and to be on your doorstep. Tell me, how many international students are in Aberdeen? Is it a case of it's, you know, strong for international students? Do a lot of people look to Aberdeen? Is it on the map? And when international students come to Aberdeen, what do they love the most? Oh, those are all good questions. So roughly a third of our population um, on campus are international. We have um, over 5,000 of our students um, currently studying with us. And there is another university in Aberdeen who also have international students. So the city in general really does have an international student feel. Come September, which is our main intake it is buzzing um, and that's our favorite time to be on campus because everyone's excited everyone's landing sometimes people travel with their families and the city definitely has a real glow about it in September and the fact that as you say the airport is so close to um, the city center it's easy um, a taxi ride takes about 15-20 minutes to get you to your accommodation and it's very new and modern and easy to maneuver as well yeah. Students, um, what they love about the city, um, I think they like that it's not too big. So as an international student coming and moving your life, um, sometimes that can obviously bring with it excitement, but obviously anxiety as well, because you don't really know what you're coming to. So the fact that our city is smaller, but still has everything that a large city has, it makes it easier to maneuver. We're also, I like to think, super friendly. So if students get lost, um, they can ask for directions to total strangers and they'll put them on the right bus and point them in the right direction. So really that friendly um, vibe that we give off, I think is the best thing that our city has to offer. Cool, and just talking about, I mean, you, you touched upon it anyway, accommodation, um, the affordability, because obviously you've mentioned yourself, you've lived, you know, you, you're from the south of Scotland, you've lived in many Scottish cities. Talk to me about the affordability, because the cost of living must be a bit lower compared to the likes of expensive cities such as Edinburgh and Glasgow. Definitely. And we've been given um, a really great statistic recently, which ranks us as one of the most affordable cities in the UK. Um, again, I think there's maybe a, a misconception that because we are the energy, oil and gas capital, that our prices are very high. That used to be the case many years ago, but that's changed now. So the city is very affordable and it obviously depends how expensively or, or um, cheaply you want to live. Um, and as I say, you can get a part time job. So there is something for everyone. Um, I myself find the city a wonderful place to live um, and you really just have to budget for for big things um, that you hope to afford in the future. And because obviously it is a, you know, you mentioned there one third of all students, not just from your university, but from another university as well, are international. Does it give it a very cosmopolitan vibe in the city? Does it get, you know, is there something for everyone there? Definitely. And often some of these students tend to stay in Aberdeen. So we now have the new graduate immigration route visa, which allows students to stay for up to two years post graduation. Um, and many of these students do go on to work in the energy industry from all different areas of the world and they remain with their families. And I know that when I'm walking around campus, I don't feel very Scottish, which is amazing because I love <laughs> international life. Um, and that's what you're really looking from, for from a university experience you want that international feel you want to make friends with people from Nigeria America India South Africa Malaysia you want you want to broaden your horizons um that's why I think anyway uh, David Emma do you want to elaborate any further on that because I think it's quite an important point you know for an international student to come over to to the UK like Emily just mentioned there anxiety can creep in especially if you know you're coming from a different continent and you've never been abroad um to come to Aberdeen a place that they might never have heard of before can be daunting um so talk to me more about it uh, yeah sorry, I mean, I just, I, I, sorry I'm undoing I was going to quickly say that um what's wonderful about being such an international university is that there are cultural events and opportunities to share your own culture and to learn about other cultures so there really there are a lot a lot happening on campus to really reinforce that cosmopolitan international um, atmosphere but David you'll have lots more to add to that too <laughs> I, I can speak from my own experience, uh, although it's been a fair few years now, but I, I came here as an international student, it was my first time living away from home. 
Um, and I, I find it a wonderful experience, so much so that I, after my bachelor, I decided to do my postgraduate master's at the university as well. And obviously, I'm still here. Uh, many years later, I've, I've enjoyed it so much. Uh, there, there's lots of support. So when, when you arrive, you A, there'll be lots of other people in the same position arriving at the same time. We normally have a week at the start of term, whether it's for undergraduate or for masters. Uh, so the welcome week with a lots of induction events and getting to know the campus and the city. And so you're not sort of arriving and then have to go to the first lecture immediately you know, afterwards. Um, you can sort of arrive, settle in, you know, there's campus tours offered, there's city tours offered, there's lots of, sort of welcome events. Each school normally has their own induction event for their programs. Um, we have a sort of meet and greet at the airport uh, in, in that first uh, sort of arrival period. So if, if students are maybe a little bit lost, there will be a friendly face there. And as Emily said, you know, locals are very used to having students here and are very warm and welcome generally. Um, so, so you can just sort of, you know, ask anyone for, for help. Um, and I certainly found that to be one of the sort of main sort of reasons why, why I enjoyed it here so much when I first arrived. So there's a lot of support going on. And then if you know, those that maybe feel a little bit homesick uh, after that initial sort of period of settling in and the excitement of arriving, um, there are lots of student societies that are also particular to people from a certain part of the world. So you know, there will always be someone around if, if you miss your favorite food. Uh, a, there's probably a restaurant in Aberdeen that, that offers it uh, or a shop where you can buy it. And B, there will be other people around that you can sort of you know, talk about home or, or you know, get together to maybe cook a traditional meal or something like that. So, so it's just a very great environment. Fantastic. And while it can be daunting, we will make sure that all of the support is in place. Uh, right um, from and for those one. of you that were watching earlier as well, and I'll just remind the podcast viewers, it's one degree hotter in Aberdeen and less rainfall than Miami. So... Take, take what you want from that, but it's a um, great place to live. Um, I'm, I'm just going to stay on the theme of Aberdeen as a whole and the university, because obviously we're just coming out of the other side, hopefully, of the pandemic um, and everything that's gone on with COVID-19. What did you do as a university to help students, particularly international students, that came over to Aberdeen that had to isolate, that had to, or still do have to potentially isolate at any point? Um, what are you doing with those students to help them and to guide them through that tricky period of time? I'll open that to, up to anyone. So I'll, I'll quickly start off. So our, our student, we have an amazing student support team, which encompasses a, a huge range of services, but they really gave a very personal individual support to students who were having to isolate um, from very practical um, you know food deliveries down to just making personal contact phone calls keeping in touch making sure that everyone who had spent time on their own still felt part of the community because as Emily alluded to earlier we're very proud of that community feel that we have so we really reached out on a very personal level we moved I mean from a, an educational experience um, Aberdeen, like other universities, has actually been using technology to support education for many, many years now, and we move very, very, very rapidly to make sure that students have the best educational experience through, through online and other virtual opportunities as well. And um, we got some really good feedback from our students as well about the level of support that we, we gave them. So I think we were quite proud of the way that we, we responded. Um, obviously not something we we want to ever do again, but it's good to know that we were able to do it um, yeah. in this in, the, in this instance. But David or Emily, do you have anything to add as well from your experiences of, of what we did? I think you've, you, you've covered the, the main bits there. Um, obviously, it was a bit of an, uh, an adjustment in, in, in 2020 um, where we had to sort of rapidly move to you know, being off campus and, and, and uh, online. Um, but I think, yeah, we, we've done great support. The feedback we've had has been phenomenal. And, and that sort of you know, fifth in the UK for student satisfaction rating is, was achieved during the, the height of the pandemic. So while most of our teaching uh, was being online. Um, so I think from, from that point of view, it's, 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 it's been just yeah. great to see the university community respond as well. And some of our students have also been very generous in their response. There were groups of set up to, to check on sort of elderly neighbors and help distribute food parcels and things like that where our own students got involved. Obviously a lot of our medical students and medical sciences students were involved in the NHS response as well. So as a community, I think we really sort of pulled together. Yeah, and I think we've had some questions come in as well um, on social media relating to modes of study. You know, can you study online? But what we what we can say at postgrad is, you know, we've done research into the market over the last two to three years. And whilst around about 30 percent of the um, collective undergraduate and masters uh, postgraduate students are um, now studying online as a consequence of the pandemic what we actually found is less than 10 percent 
increase in postgraduates going online. And that is because they want to study at the location. It's all about enhancing their life experience um, and getting that on their CV and getting that into their education because it, it is invaluable. You know, you, we can all sit at laptops. We all do it now, um, you know, from the comfort of our homes. But to get out and test yourself and to have that life experience is invaluable. So um, I won't really ask that question because I think that, you know, it's all about coming to Aberdeen. But in terms of international students, you touched upon it earlier, Emily, about the um, coming in to, you know, flying in from Amsterdam um, and having your visa centre at the airport. Um, what is the process with that? How long does it take when you first apply to then go on, try and get a visa? You know, how long typically can it take to then end up with a, a decision? That's a good question. Um, so it differs for different countries because um, different uh, UKVI visa processing centres have different time scales. So I would say definitely check with your regional office wherever you're based so that you kind of know the lead time on visas because sometimes a visa can be turned around in 24 hours and sometimes it takes between four and six weeks depending on where you're staying. From our point of view, you have to make sure that you have all of your documents submitted um, you get what's called a CAS, a confirmation of acceptance of study, and that's a number unique to you, and you use this to apply for a visa. So you need to make sure all of your um, bank statements and everything has been processed um, with us, and then that CAS will be issued to you. We're currently in the process of issuing CAS to all students, um, so hopefully those of you on the call that are offer holders will receive them soon. Um, but as I say, check with your regional office just to be updated on, on where you're at, and also check to see if you need an ATAS certificate. Some of the postgraduate um, masters that we offer do need an ATAS certificate. So that's important that you look into that. And also if you're from specific countries, you'll also be asked to do a TB test um, before we issue you a CAS. So that's something else just to bear in mind. And English language testing and, and the support, what, what's the requirements? What bodies do you use? Presumably there's like Sir Pearson's and IELTS out there, but mm -hmm. um, just inform the students that are listening and watching what they need to do then, what they, what they need. Um, okay, so for IELTS, we need an overall normally 6.5 score. We also offer um, PTE, we offer TOEFL, um, we offer Duolingo. Um, sometimes we can accept a medium of study letter, depending on which undergraduate institution you attended. Um, and obviously, if you've done A-levels or GCSEs, we um, will also look into the grades that you have gotten in those areas. Um, I'm going to refer to David here. Is there anything that I've missed? No, that's most of them. Um, the only other one we'll accept, depending on where you've done your high school and the level of English you achieved in your high school, and if it's no, no older than 10 years, we might also be able to accept your high school certificate as proof of English. Um, I'll put a link in the chat to our uh, English page, which lists all of the documents and tests we do accept and the grades. Uh, as Emily mentioned, some of the tests we do accept are online tests. So if you live somewhere where it's still more difficult to go to a test center or you know, availability is an issue, some of the like IELTS online or TOEFL at home, we do accept for entry uh, at the moment. Some might be reviewed such as Duolingo for future years. Um, and I've put a link in the chat there with all of the uh, uh, test requirements and the various documents we accept. And just for me, just, sorry, 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 Emma, go on. So I'd also just add to that, we also have our own um, language center on campus, um, which offers pre-sessionable English language programs as well. So um, that's um, something that other people, uh, some of our students use to make sure their English is the right level. Brilliant. Um, and again, I'll open this up um, as one of the last couple of questions actually, but um, we haven't really spoken much about the actual university and the, the, the structure itself. Um, have you got kind of, can you enlighten the students in terms of the most popular colleges um, and, you know, business and law, very popular topics at the moment, including healthcare as well, um, because of everything that's happened with the pandemic. Um, what are the most popular colleges at your university and what would you say are one of the most popular postgraduate courses at the moment? David, if I can start with you. <laughs> yeah, um, I think generally um, anything to do with sort of engineering, um, energy, uh, whether that's of decommissioning, transitioning, uh, sustainability, renewable energy engineering now, as well as still chemical engineering, petroleum engineering. So that, that's been our 
strong suit for many, many decades now with incredibly close industry links. And, and that is still a very popular area. Obviously, with all that's going on in the world, the move is, is partially away from oil and gas to more renewable energies. And we have programs that address that. Um, so advanced material, energy materials, for instance, or we have degrees in transitioning to re uh, renewables and sustainability. I think that's probably still one of our main areas. Uh, medical sciences, things like immunology, uh, genetics, uh, medical physics, medical imaging are, are the strong suits that are still very, very popular. But then, of course, our business school um, is also still very popular, and, and a lot of our students are as of various of the programs in the business school. Yeah. Uh, Emily, do you want to add any? Yeah, um, perhaps our public health course that we offer. Um, I know that's really popular in my areas as we've just come out of COVID and um, public health was prevalent in organising the way in which cities and countries dealt with the pandemic. So it's definitely become a more popular subject and um, things like computing, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, robotics. And um, these are all amazing programmes that we offer. Um, we also do um, uh, biomechanical engineering, where they're looking at prosthetic limbs um, and things like that, which are super um, exciting. And a lot of these subjects as well will be hosted in our new science technology teaching hub, which has state-of-the-art laboratory facilities um, where some students in the medical school, the engineering school um, will have access to. Excellent. Um, okay, then, um, and one final point just before we wrap things up. Um, to the students watching today, where can they apply? What are the next steps for them? So they've come on. Many of you might already have applied and are at that stage, as we can see from the questions. But if you are new to this and you're looking at Aberdeen, where do they go? What do they do and what can they expect? David, if we can start with you. Um, yes, yeah, so we are still accepting applications for this coming September, September 2022 entry. Uh, it's all done through our own website, and I will post the link uh, in the chat for this. Um, so unlike undergrad, it, it's not decentralized, it's through, directly through university. The deadline is on the 11th of July uh, for anyone wishing to start in September, and I would definitely recommend to apply as quickly as possible and have as many of your documents ready. We are dealing with a large volume of applications. Um, so the sooner you apply, I wouldn't leave it till the very last uh, day of, of the deadline, but if you can apply you know, this, this month or this week, uh, do, do it sooner rather than later. Um, then we will aim to make decisions as quickly as possible, but this will take a few weeks just due to the, the sheer volume of applications. Uh, and then we have deadlines for submitting all of your documents. You don't need to have all of your documents for the initial application, so someone who has not taken an English test yet can still apply. We can make conditional offers and then you can send a, an English test later on. The deadline for sending documents would be the 26th of August. So we need to have all of the documents in place by then. So an acceptance letter, financial guarantee letter, English tests, TB tests, ATAS, whatever we need, uh, needs to be in place by the 26th of August in order for us to be able to issue a CAS. And of course, there will inevitably be students here who are looking at things like evening scholarships and stuff like that, external scholarships that will be looking to start next year in 23. So very important, you know, if you are looking for any funding or scholarship, it's an area that we haven't really covered too much in the q and I think that's more deliberate than, than nothing else, just purely because we know there's funding, we know there's scholarships. Go over to Aberdeen's website, have a look at the areas that you can go on and apply for. And if you've got any questions, please reach out to any of the three. Um, we'll be sharing you um, a link in the um, follow-up emails anyway. So if anyone's got any questions, please do let us know. But for now, David, Emily and Emma, a huge thank you. Um, brilliant. Um, a fantastic Q&A and a fantastic presentation as well. So thank you for your time and thank you for coming on today. It's been much appreciated. But for now, um, I'm just going to talk you through postgrad.com and what we offer. Um, so those of you that aren't aware of who we are, we have a, we've helped over 10 million students find their perfect PG programme, over 200 countries for you to study at, obviously Scotland being one of the main countries or people um, for students to look at on our website. Uh, partnerships with the likes of Chevening and Marshall and other uh, funding partners as well. The subject areas and the accommodation opportunities as well on our website are really huge. Head over to the website, have a look, and you can also apply for £500 bursary as, now, as well. Now, anybody watching our webinars over the next 12 months, um, is get, one person will be guaranteed to win £500. So head over to our website, make sure you apply. It's worth £500, doesn't clash with any other funding. Um, so there's no reason you, you can't apply full-time, part-time, distance learning, 
head over and apply. But for now, a huge thank you to everyone at Aberdeen for making this happen. Um, I'll just give everyone the opportunity just to say bye on camera. So thank you very much. Um, I'll wrap up from here. Thank you very much. And David, Emily, Emma, do you just want to say bye? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much for having us today, Gareth, and Pleasure. thank you for everyone who joined us. Um, you have our contact details and, and university contact details, so for any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch, but and enjoy the rest of your day. Emily? Thanks, everyone. We look forward to welcoming you, hopefully, to campus very soon. <laughs> and Emma, thank you for taking thank part. Thanks very much, everyone. Great to take part in this. Thank you. And once more, if anyone's got any more questions, there will be follow up emails going around and there will also be postgrad.com where you can see a replay of this webinar. But for now, a huge thank you. And we'll see you all tomorrow for the study in UK with the University of Staffordshire. Thank you and bye bye.